What is Next is a very educative program on GTV, the authentic and trusted voice of Ghana. What is Next is a program that is asking questions about contemporary challenges confronting us as a nation. But in the process, we look for people that we consider to be men and women with accumulated wisdom, people who are thought leaders of our land at the moment. And we just get closer to them and allow them to help us find relevant answers to some of the questions uh, confronting us. As a nation, we are counting days and we will be voting. And let's keep this in mind. Every election is about the future. And as we go into the future, as the humans will want us to sing, and as we keep singing, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. If elections are about the future, Jehovah must lead us there. And therefore, as we prepare to vote, we should not deviate from the will of God for our nation for the days and years ahead. And that is why on what is next this afternoon, we invite a servant of God, a man, a bishop of God's people, to just come and help us find answers. How do we seek God's will, even through election? And the servant of God to help us on what is next this afternoon is a former presiding bishop of the people called Methodist, the immediate uh, past chairperson of the Electoral Commission. And I may want to continue of and the, add... Of the Peace Council. Of the Peace Council. Sorry about that. The, the immediate uh, uh, past chairman of National Peace Council. I'm talking about Most Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante. Prof. Asishua, welcome to What is Next. Thank you. And we are so grateful you've made the time to be with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Prof, we know that voting is a civic responsibility. But does it also have any theological, whether you call it biblical, spiritual uh, root? Is, is voting a sacred duty? Yes. Voting is a sacred duty in the sense that when God created us, he did not leave us to live in a state of nature. When I say the state of nature, I'm talking about a situation where everybody um, has a right on his own and is a governor of himself and all that. Because the moment we begin to live in that sense, in, the, in that state of nature where everybody is a ruler to himself, and uh, you, when you see red light, you will stop. But for me, when I see red light, I go. Green light, I stop. And all that. There will be total chaos. If you look at the way God created this world, he created it in an orderly manner. And he expects that we also take care of the world that he has created in an orderly manner. And by means of election, we elect, we seed the powers that God has given to us to a group of people so that they will ensure the orderliness and the development of our nation. So voting is not just a civil responsibility, it's also a sacred responsibility. After all, Romans 13 says that, you know, it is God who has appointed authorities so that the governor himself is... Uh, governance is something that God created and therefore it is important that as Christians we take voting seriously now, Prof, we have church members who participate in the prayer and fasting uh, meetings that will organize uh, those elections church members who will join even peace campaign mm. uh, etc but such church members may decide that now we've done our part, we are leaving the rest in the hands of God, and therefore may decide that on the day uh, of election, they may decide not to vote. 
uh, would they be right in, in thinking that way that we have done enough now God take over the rest no because I mean prayer and action go together when you prayed when you fasted and you prayed what did you pray for you prayed that God in his graciousness would choose an individual or a group of people to take care of God's world of God's nation and in this particular contest if we are talking about um, Ghana in our contest God, Ghana belongs to God so you prayed that God would take full control over that but God is spirit and God will not just come down himself and say that I have lifted this person he's going to use individuals God is going to use my ballot God is going to use the way I'm going to use my thumb to choose somebody to take care of this nation that is his, in answer to your prayer so if you pray and you say that I have prayed and so I leave the rest and other people go there to pray understand that we rest not against the flesh and the blood but against principalities because the enemy would also seek to take control to take charge of the nation you who have prayed and who if you are looking for the good of this nation exercise your franchise and as you do so God will through you you know select somebody that he has appointed to take care of this nation Prof, we may not know who is watching, but I, I want you to emphasize the point you just made, mm. that as we prayed, we must also go out and exercise our franchise. And yes. maybe, my viewer, somebody is thinking that, let me stop at prayer and fasting. You are no. saying, no, go beyond that. No. I mean, prayer and action have always gone together. My brother or my sister, a, 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 a viewer, listen to this carefully. Because if you have prayed if you have sought the face of the Lord, then the Lord is also saying to you that go and exercise your franchise because through you, he is going to answer the prayers you have offered to him. When we pray, God answers the prayer, but God will use us to answer this particular prayer. Prayer and action have always gone together. So pray. You have fasted, but also go and cast your vote. Now, Prof, we have been admonished in the Lord's Prayer, that's called a family prayer, to pray your will be done on earth. Mm. How does voting, as you just admonish us, or election facilitate the effort to discover mm. God's will, especially for a nation? Yes. The, when we pray and we ask God that let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we are also saying that we are prepared to allow you to use us as instruments to bring, you know, uh, to ensure that your will is established on earth. If you pray that let your will be done on earth and then you begin to do the very things that are not in keeping with what scripture has taught us then obviously you just offered prayers but you were not expecting anything to happen so again when i pray let your will be done on earth i allow god's will to be established through me through the things that i would do look in the in the in the new testament you remember when the apostles um, met Judas had lost his place because he had betrayed our Lord and so instead of the 12 representing the Israel of God there was the need for him to be replaced there were quite a number of people who were qualified to be up, to be selected um, to replace Judah one you know quite a number of them but the apostles did what they prayed and said, God, we have people here. Select from amongst us the person that you want him to represent. They put two people there and they prayed over them. And when they prayed, they cast their lots. 
and through that God indicated the person that he had chosen we have a number of people who are vying for the position of presidency in our country we have a number of people who are vying to enter into the parliament as lawmakers we don't know we are completely you know we don't know who to choose even though we may have heard, listened to them we have our choices and all that as christians we pray and as even muslims we seek god's face and we say to god we have we have prayed now use us in terms of what we are going to do to select the person that you want it may well be that even the person you voted for might not be the person god is going to use but because you have prayed and he she has prayed and all others have done so and we all of us have gone to indicate our voting god is going to use the majority of us to select one person to be the president and to select people also to go into our parliament so this is what we need to do prayer action together pray but allow yourself to be used for god's will for this for the presidency of this nation for the parliament of this nation to be fulfilled and that's the reason why after you have done that when god has brought somebody into being you don't say this person is not in my party so i'm not going to support that part person because you surrendered the will to the lord and you said let god's will be done and at the end of the day god's will has been done you pray you trust that god has used you to bring his will to pass you simply will continue to pray for that person and say thank you lord you've given us this person we are praying grant him the grace to rule this nation in a way that will bring glory and honor to your name and bring blessing to us yeah prof i'll come back to you after the election mm. whether the person i vote for will win mm. or not how we must but let's do a little bit history here mm. you've, you've gone to scripture when they voted for some early disciples but in history it's like sometimes we have a struggle we have instances where you get some people who wouldn't christians who wouldn't want to be part of this and i have the puritans uh, that period in mind others who will say that no we cannot be quiet let's get involved uh, uh so where are we coming from because some will feel that this is our church's tradition mm -hmm. and our church we don't do this you know but in terms of response those who have done what you have just called for and those who have decided not to you know be part of it do we have stories that are from history that you can share with us no you see how can you claim to be a citizen of a country because i mean you believe that this is where the lord has placed me i'm a ghanaian i didn't ask to be a ghanaian god made me a ghanaian there are some people who became Ghanaians because they came to Libya and they loved the place. Even that, you would say that destiny, God's, you know, God de determined that. I'm a Ghanaian. God has made me a Ghanaian. And we, I have the responsibility. The time has come for us to select somebody because all of us cannot be heads of state. It will be chaos. And then you sit back and say, it is this worldly. It has nothing to do with heavenly thing. So for me, I'm not going to be part of it. When you put the people in place and the laws are passed, are you going to abide by the laws? Or you are not going to abide by the laws? Do they have, you know, is governance part of the sacred things that God, the gifts that God has given to us to enable us to live and and let other people live it is unchristian for somebody to sit back and say that i'm not going to be part of this of, of the vote what i have learned from john wesley and john wesley was very 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 you know committed to this he says don't take bribe don't take anybody's money 
and allow that money to push you to vote for the person. Mm -hmm. In other words, do not be induced by money to pay uh, to elect somebody. In other words, pray and see God's face and listen to the voice, the inner voice, and vote as you are led. The second, John said, do not. John, you mean John Wesley? John Wesley. Do not be against, you know, the person who voted whom you did not vote for. In other words, you can't vote for two people at the same time if you are selecting one to be the president. One person will be voted for. The others that you didn't vote for are not your enemies. You believe that they, God can also use them. Except, except that you feel you are being led to vote for one particular person. Don't be against such people. Pray for, or for them too. And then, for those who will not share your view, and it is not possible, all of us will pray, but a number of factors will come into play in terms of our decision. There may be reasons why you and I have prayed, but I may vote for B, but you may choose to vote for um, A. There are a number of reasons that leads to that. Don't be against me because you voted for B and I voted for A. At the end of the day, through our limitations as human beings and all that we have done, God, whom we have prayed to, will intervene and select one from amongst these people to be our head of state and others, 275, to be our parliamentarians. Prof, let's go back to John Wesley mm -hmm. and maybe talk to my viewers. Mm -hmm. That uh, advice mm -hmm. of John Wesley that don't collect money from somebody mm -hmm. before you vote mm -hmm. for uh, that individual. Monetization in our, our body politics <laughs> at the moment yes. uh, uh, is, and maybe uh, let John Wesley uh, uh, speak to you okay. how many times uh, 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 by this afternoon for God's people. No, fellow Ghanaians and fellow Christians, I think what John Wesley said in his own day in the 17th century applies to our time. Do not collect money and allow that money to induce you to vote for a particular person. I hear that some people, when they go into the poll, they even want to take pictures so that they can show it to the person whose money they have taken that, look, I voted for you. There's no reason why you should do that. There are some people who go to take a vow. They take money from people and they swear by the gods of the land that, you know, if I don't vote for you, this should happen to me. John Wesley is saying, use your conscience. Don't take anybody's money. Pray to the Lord and allow the Lord to speak to you and vote as you are led. Exercise your franchise without any financial pecuniary motivation from anybody. The second thing that John has also said, the person you did not vote for is not an enemy. So don't say evil things about the person you do not want to vote for. In this country, I belong to A, this person, I don't belong to this person. So I try to find ways and means of maligning that person, saying all sorts of things that I cannot even prove to that person. If you are a Christian, desist from that. If you call yourself a religious person, desist from that because God will not take kindly to, to those things. The next thing, the person who has voted for somebody different from the person you voted for is not an enemy. That person is also exercising his or her rights. There is an account saying that one man's meat is another person's poison. That's the way God 
has created us different taste different somebody when it comes to colors somebody like pink others like red others like white others like black allow them in fact the Lord said allow all these things to grow in the final analysis he will determine let us do that in the final analysis he will select one to be the leader 275 people to be our parliamentarians if you are a Christian this is what is expected of you the idea that I'm not going to vote why because the other time I voted for so so and so he promised that he will give me job he didn't get me job and so I'm not going to vote hey be very careful about that don't do that because of one person you are not going to vote you're not going to do the duty the responsibilities God has entrusted into your hands as a citizen of this country he has placed you. you are not a citizen of America you're not a citizen of Britain he's made you a citizen of Ghana and Ghanaians are selecting our leaders and you say no I think we need to be very careful I'm saying that go out there with prayer elect cast your vote and allow God to select the one he has chosen the West, this is what is next and I'm in conversation with most Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante former presiding Bishop Methodist Church Ghana we are reflecting on seeking God's will through elections prof now let's go back to scripture i have in mind psalm 37 verse 5 that scripture says we must commit our ways to the lord trust in him and he will do it mm. some of the things you are mentioning to us but what does it mean to commit our ways to the lord in matters of voting especially uh if i have settled somewhere last year the person i'll vote for monday and, and I say, I, I'm committing or I've committed my ways to the Lord. Uh, what exactly am I doing? You see, the, the psalm that you read says, we should commit our ways to the Lord and he will do what? He will take care of us. Mm -hmm. I'm committing my vote to the Lord. What is the purpose? What, what is the end of my vote? I'm voting because I want to select a leader. That's my part. But I'm doing this in the fear of the Lord as a sacred duty at the end of the day i'm saying lord have your way in all the elections that we have done select one from this thing that we have done select one person for us i'm committing my vote into the hands of the lord i'm committing the entire you know process into the hands of the lord and he will take care of us that's the way to go about it so it's not a question that we oh, voted for this person but the lord did not choose him fine do you think look when they when the the apostles met and they 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 prayed and they cast the vote somebody one of them and the two people there the person who was selected had the majority vote it doesn't mean that he the, the other person who lost didn't have anything but they said oh the majority have chosen this and so we think god has sided with this particular person in some places they cast what they call lots you take blue i take red and if the red turns this way then it's for me if the black turns this way god uses different methods to select that it's, it's just it happens that in this country we are using the ballot box to determine and that's the way we trust God to choose a leader for us. So you, as a Christian, and I will be praying here and saying that, Lord, we stretch our hands on all the ballot boxes. And we pray that you take total and full control as we go out there and exercise our franchise. Irrespective of us, select a leader for us. That's what we are saying. My prof, in the process of committing my way to the hands of the Lord mm. in the area of election, mm. I have 
a member in my church who mm. is contesting mm. an MP, a president who is a, a member of my church, or we are from the same community. Mm. In fact, he's an old boy. Mm. You know, do I still need to commit my way to the Lord and pray and asking God to still show me what? When I know a member of my church is one of them, when I know an old boy is a member, in fact, one from my community, uh, uh, my tribe, if you like, uh, uh, a good method is, is part of them. Do I still go out searching for God's will in such matters? Definitely, you need to search God's will. Your, your good Methodist, who is the same Methodist as I am, may not be the person God has chosen. Or a Presbyterian. Or a Presbyterian or a Pentecostal. A Baptist or, or yeah, a Catholic. May not, may not be the person God has chosen. You know, um, you remember when, when it became necessary for Israel had asked for for a king, and when Saul was in, is chosen, and 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 later on when you know it became necessary for the um, uh, for for him when Saul was was chosen and Israel went before God, what was happening? Greater men, I mean, he had brothers who were, you know, uh, 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 you know strong and beautiful and handsome and the man of God thought that we can take this person early up and God said to him I have not chosen him oh this person attended school is, is an you know Legon graduate KNUST so let me go for him because I'm connected with KNUST. And God says, I've not chosen him. And so, you know, even though, and sometimes even though we may have these, you know, um, considerations, the person is from my tribe and this and that and that, God may not have chosen that person. Pray seriously. If God speaks to you that vote for that person, Vote for that person not because he belongs to your church, not because he belongs to your ethnic group, not because of anything. But you are voting for him because you have taken a number of things into consideration. And God is going to speak to you through a number of things about this person. His humility, his love, his capacity, and all that. God will use all these things to appeal to you. Okay? But there's another person there who is not... I'm a Methodist. There's another person there who's a Muslim. He has certain qualities that I believe this is the person who can do the job better. I have prayed. I have sought God's face. I'm going to vote for that person. At the end of the day, after I have voted, I have done my job. I sit back for God to use the majority to select one of them for us. Mm. You mentioned humility and, and other uh, moral values. Um, and I'm just asking that in scripture it says, righteousness uh, exalts a nation. Sin, it it's has been said, is a reproach. Mm. Now, in the effort to discern the candidate to vote for, does character and moral ethical values, like some of the things you just mentioned, do they matter? They do matter. Indeed, you know, I mean, it is important for us to sit back and begin to ask all these things. Your character, morals of the person matter. But at the same time, we should also be mindful of the fact that all have sinned. There is no perfect human being on earth. If we are looking for the perfect one to vote for, then it's Jesus, unfortunately. I mean, Jesus is not standing in this election. He's not you know one of the candidates okay jesus is not one of the candidates so no matter what the person that i'm looking at i may be looking for his character his moral you know the way he does his own things um his capacity should be taken into consideration and all that but having said all that i must also admit that the person i'm choosing is not perfect the person is not 
perfect and that apart from him there are others who can also do that when people go when we are somebody is elected the person who has been elected should not think that He's better off than the others. That's why he's been elected. I think we should come to a point where people would say, it is the Lord who has selected me, and therefore I'm here as a servant leader to, to serve, just as he has assigned me that responsibility. Because anybody who thinks that he's been elected on his own merit is not going to be able to deliver anything for us. So there is that side, the flip side of it. If our elected leaders will understand that they are there because God has graciously, graciously mm -hmm. chosen them and not because of their own merit to serve. They will humble themselves and allow God to use them to serve the nation. And Prof, you may have had your own experience. A loss in contest is always unpleasant. Maybe you've had some before. Mm. But if we go into elections to seek the will of God as you are uh, uh, encouraging us for say nation, how should candidate respond and maybe react <laughs> to the loss of election? Mm. If we accept the fact that it is the Lord who chooses and, and so the Lord will definitely choose his own I may have prayed. I may have all that it takes. And we go to the election and the Lord says, the results indicate that I'm not the one who is being chosen. I should say that. The results indicate that I'm not the one who is being chosen. I will accept it. I accept it and say, in good faith, thy will be done, O Lord. The greatest prayer anybody has offered. You remember, you may have your desire. Jesus himself did that in the Garden of Gethsemane. He looked at the, 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 the weight, the depth of the suffering and said, Father, if it is possible, this cup, let it pass by me. I came to do your will. But if it is possible, the way I look at it, let it pass by me. Nevertheless, it is not my will that I'm seeking, but your will be done. Let's twist it. Father, if it is possible, if it is possible, let me be elected to serve your people. I'm ready to serve your people. But then having said that, I say it is not my will. Let your will be done in my life. So if the results come, and the results, again, we will have a lot to discuss. You know, even in situations where you think that somebody has manipulated this and that and that and that, God works in mysterious ways. You know, he's wanted to perform. The way God does his own things he uses different means to do his own thing. The results come. I accept it. I give it to God. And I pray. Maybe this is not the time. When we pray to God to ask for something, God may say, take it. No. Not yet time. And in doing all that, God is maturing you till a point where it becomes necessary for you to do that. Or God may even say, don't get there. That's not where I want you. After all, service to the nation is not just becoming the president of the nation or a parliamentarian. Prof, I, I use the how do we react? Mm. Uh, because sometimes, and, and you, you went there, you, you feel that some of our people feel that depending on your agents, party mm. agents, that we have been cheated. Mm. Uh, EC has not been fair. Mm. The, the, our opponents you know, have done X, Y, Z. Mm. We won't accept it. Mm. And then, you, you know, they start mobilizing people, you know, on the street, and people start throwing stones. Mm. But you are saying that through it all, 
we must still see God's will. Mm. I don't know who is watching us, but will you talk directly to those who are in in today's contest? Mm. And I'm not. I don't. I'm not by that saying that somebody should cheat and yeah. you know, manipulate. Yeah. But that people should arm themselves for the outcome. At least mobilizing people, uh, you know, to the street to throw stones should not be one of the options. No. I think it is important, first of all, as you rightly said, for us to say to the um, arbiters, those who are manning the elections, who have the responsibility to ensure that God, the, the, the you know, people's votes count and that we do genuine things for God to decide through the genuine things that we are doing. Therefore, don't allow the devil to use you if you have the responsibility to man a polling station. Don't attempt because you will be fighting God. From my Christian perspective, this is the message I'll give you. But having said that, let me also say to those who are contesting, understand that you may win. God may select you from our perspective or you may lose. And when you lose, your option is not inciting people to do underhanded things to mar the peace of the nation. When you lose and you think you have been cheated, use the prescribed way the way that all of us have accepted to seek redress. And that's why we have the judiciary. Seek redress through the courts. If through the courts, the courts say no, it is no. We have seen it in this country before, where after the MPP believed that they had been cheated, they went to court, the court decided. It was four against five against four and here the flag bearer said i accept it i'm not happy with it but i will accept it and move forward i think that should be your attitude if you are going in there and at the end of the day your mind is that if i lose it means that somebody has rigged the thing you have no business being there because you have a shock of your life get ready to understand that you may win or you may lose and win or lose submit to the will of the people the will of God or seek redress through the proper channels and not by inciting people to cause trouble but Ruth, how should churches or how should post-election victories be celebrated when we know that in the same congregation or in fact in the communities why some have won others have lost mm. so when we go to church the sunday after the elections mm. how do we handle victory celebrations you know because sometimes you find our pastors and uh you sit back and others have also lost and it's like they are grieving but uh, my pastor doesn't care no, I think we need to be very careful. We need to be circumspect in our jubilation. I remember um, the 2012 election after we had met, we, and it became clear that um, um, the MPP was not happy with the, with the election, the results. The agreement all of us there had was that, well, the Electoral Commission would announce whatever it is but if it turns out that your party has won mitigate your jubilation because you can through the way you jubilate incite others to react in, in underhanded way others are hurting and look you we talked about the monetization of our election people have spent you know, fortune. They have spent a fortune 
Pa- it is start from the primaries. Yes. You know, in the primary people have we spent, a, part to, we've spent a uh, fortune. You know, some people have sold properties to be here. So it's not a joke. And when they have lost it all, and especially in, in our contest where the winner um, the winner wins all and the, and the, and the, and and then we say that what the loser loses all it becomes a problem so let's be very careful when we are reacting to some of these when we think we have won just as we are telling those who have lost not to take arms and 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 do things that will undermine the peace of this country don't allow your jubilation to undermine the peace of this country. Be circumspect, be sensitive to the feelings of your brothers and sisters who may, whose parties may have lost or who may have lost. And, and Prof, when we examine the exit of leaders in scriptures, you have instances that some people who were genuinely called by God at the point of entering to leadership became a mess at the point of exiting leadership. Mm. So if victory in an election is considered uh, as an affirmation of God's will, does it guarantee automatic success in leadership performance? Not at all. That's the reason why I was saying that if you believe that it is God who has, you know, once you win election, definitely we are saying that it is the Lord who selects leaders. Submit yourself to the Lord, but not just to the Lord. Submitting to the Lord is submitting to the will of the people. Make sure that you don't go there to line your pocket. Go there to implement the policies you said you would implement. Be among the people as one who serves and not to be served. Follow a leadership that will be very much concerned about the well-being of your people when you do that that will be good but as you said there are leaders who have got into such positions and they forget that it is somebody who has brought them there and they think that they are there because of their own abilities and their own powers and their capacity to you know win people to themselves such leaders fail and they fail bad viewers this is what is next and i'm in conversation with most reverend professor emmanuel asante a former presiding bishop of the methodist church ghana and just by grace god has granted him grace to perform real pastoral care for this nation especially when we come to matters of peace and security I have five minutes left, and I want to give the five minutes to Prof to share one or two things that is still on his heart as we go to the election and lead us in prayer. Mm. So if you are with us in your hall bedroom, uh, I will want to invite you to join the prayer as the man of God leads us. Uh, in prayer, praying for this nation and also praying for you as you get ready to vote that at the end of the day, we as a people can say we have discovered God's will for ourselves and for our dear nation. Maybe, Prof, before the prayer, if you want to say a word or two else, the remaining time, I want you to lead us in prayer. Okay. I think all that I will say to you is submit your will to the hands of the Lord. In this election, let us, as Christians, know that it is the Lord who chooses the leaders of this nation. We may have our preferences, we may have campaigned for them. Let us allow the Lord to use his own discretion through us as Ghanaians, not you as an individual, as Ghanaians, to select his own leaders. At this stage, I want us to pray. And if you are a Christian or even a Muslim, and you are watching this program, I'd like you to pray with us. First of all, let us 
thank God. I want you to say, yes, thank Lord. God. Yes, Let us Lord. thank God for giving us a nation like Ghana. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Lord. Let us give praise and thanks to him for the peace Lord, that God Lord, has endowed our nation with. We praise you. Peace. Pray that there will be canopy. Oh, yes, Lord. God will surround this nation come Monday with his peace. And even from now until Monday, let us pray that he will stretch forth his hands upon this nation of ours. And that's any plan, any machinations, anything that the enemy has planned for this nation, pray to the Lord to thwart it, to destroy it. Jesus, in your name, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord Jesus, Father, we come and we pray to you. You have given us Ghana. Jesus, Ghana is the nation that you have given us. Oh yes, Lord Jesus. The enemy will seek to have Ghana burnt, to have blood flowing. There's been all sorts of predictions, but we come against it in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father, we are praying mm. in the name of Jesus mm. that you stretch out your hands. Mm that dear lord we will go to these polls mm -hmm. peacefully mm -hmm. and come out peacefully mm -hmm. and that at the end of the day you will choose a person for us mm -hmm. to be our president mm -hmm. and 275 people to take care of our parliament mm -hmm. we lift the nation and Jesus hand Jesus this God. election into your hands Jesus. whatever plans that the enemy has planned we reject it yes, in the blood of Jesus, Jesus and pray that, Lord, you will reign supreme. Mm. Take the glory. Hallelujah. Take the glory, Lord. Take the glory. Hallelujah. And pour forth your blessings Jesus. upon your people. Oh, we ask in Jesus, our Lord's name. Amen. 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 Viewers, this is what is next. We will come your way same time next week, God willing. Till then, it is not only your civic responsibility to vote, it's also a sacred duty as we've been told. May God bless our homeland Ghana, make this dear nation great and strong. My name is Kwabunopuni Frempong.